Pinggar eh Kau tinggar eh Yes <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to the review of the Kingston 18 XL 250km range testing. I've been riding this wheel now for about a month or so and I've put some serious miles onto it and I've enjoyed every single one of them. This is a wheel that, for me, I was uncertain of. I'd got a bit in the back of my mind about Kingston that I thought I wasn't sure of. But I've ridden this now for some time and I can tell you this is a really fantastic wheel. So I do lots of riding, mostly on streets, commuting to and from work, not so much on trails and off-road stuff. And that's where I do uh, most of the, the miles. And this wheel is perfect for that environment. I have to say, uh, I ride it on some, uh, some busy areas and I have absolute confidence that this wheel is going to take whatever I throw at it. Uh, so this is the XL, so it's got a slightly longer range. I haven't actually tested the range capacity of this. The way I ride it, and I suppose many of us ride them, is we ride them to and from a destination or we know that the limits of it and so I ride mine to work and back, it's 10 miles there, 10 miles back um, and in doing that I just say I've actually cut off half an hour of my commute time when I used to drive. This is half an hour faster to take this than it is to drive through London. Uh, so that's a bonus in itself. But when I get to work or when I get back, I plug it in and charge it up. So I've not really tested it to its capacity in terms of what the range of the batteries are. So I'm going to keep riding this and for the 500 kilometer test, I am going to do that. I'm going to see what the range is and what the real world testing is in those environments. But for me, I plug it in, leave with 100% battery, I drive, I ride 20 miles and I come back and there is plenty left in the tank. I, mean, never, I never drop below, you know, three or maybe three lights, three light, uh, green lights disappear on the ring, so <clears throat> there's plenty left in there. I have ridden it down below 50, 30, maybe 20 percent and it does uh, want to slow you down at that point, it does start to tilt you back, uh, but uh, I've not really got there yet on this very often, so I'll do some more riding like that and I'll see what it's really like. Oh, you can get it! Can you get it? Yes! <laughs> What I can say about this wheel is it has got quite a loud shout feature on the way I've got it set up on my app anyway to uh, to tell you to decelerate and in fact it can be quite startling. The first time that happened to me I'd ridden this wheel for about 5-10 minutes, I went down a very steep hill, I went too fast, it tilted me back quite dramatically and told me to decelerate, decelerate and I actually lost it and crashed it. It took a big spill, it did quite a lot of damage and uh, it has had to be rebuilt slightly. So I know at Speedy Feet the rule is <clears throat> you try to ride these as carefully as you can but as, as hard and as fast as you can so that you're not really um, comparing wheels that maybe have had things done to them but, but in all honesty we had to strip this down and replace the, the base of this wheel um, because some of the bolts had sheared off. Um, maybe a bit of a design flaw there, I know when we put the new base plate on they changed the design of it slightly. They actually got um, the, the, the bolts that connected the facing panel to the body and actually got screws in the back of them as well as the front. So that I think they may be aware that that's a bit of a design fault perhaps, uh, but it feels like this is a well-built machine. It took a heck of a battering and it has ridden beautifully, not a problem with it whatsoever.
not without a few niggles for me. One of the niggles has to be the handle. Uh, because I ride mine in busy areas and sometimes in out of train stations, you do need to have confidence to pick it up by the handle and be able to carry it upstairs. It has got a feature when you pick it up, you wait for a beep beep noise, and then that cuts off, disconnects the, um, the, the motor from the wheel, and you can carry it up without spinning it. So you need confidence in that. Particularly in a busy place, you might have hundreds of people coming behind you on the, on the uh, concourse, you've got to pick it up and work with it. Sometimes, pick it up, beep beep. As you then pick it up, it beeps again, and the wheel starts to spin. And then what you're gonna do is wait there until it finishes spinning. It'll say quite loudly, decelerate now, decelerate now. And everybody's watching you with that. <laughs> um, and because if you put it down, you, then you, you burn some rubber on the floor and, and make uh, skid marks on the floor. Not good either, so you've got to wait till it stops spinning. And when it's a busy platform, that's first of all, it's embarrassing. Second of all, you're slowing people up and you're getting in people's way. So sometimes the handle can be a little bit temperamental. The other thing about the handle is this is not a light wheel. So when you're carrying it long distances, sometimes you pick it up on a, on a, on a train station uh, stairs. I've done it a couple of times now where there's not really a chance to put it down again. So you've gone up around the corner, coming down the other side perhaps, and it's a heavy wheel. So what I tend to do, or what, what you need to do is, you just adjust it, you just jolt it in your hand, just to adjust it because it's slipping through your fingers perhaps. If you then jolt it or jiggle it, that trips the centre again, it thinks you've put it down, it beeps again, and in a busy stairway with hundreds of people around you, the wheel can start spinning again. Decelerate, decelerate, you can't do anything, you've just got to let it spin as it starts to you know, try and break free of your grip. Um, so I've got to the stage now where I'm thinking every time I want to pick it up, I'll turn it off and then turn it on again. Um, I'll keep playing with that. I think maybe, and maybe you need to push the handle down before you pick it up. I've tried that, it's just a bit hit and miss for me. The other, and these are all really minor things because this wheel, I'm telling you now, this rides like a dream. The other niggle for me are the foot plates in that they are put on incredibly stiffly. So when you to try and open them, you've got to, and I'm not exaggerating this, oh, okay, you really got to kind of force them down. Some of the wheels I've ridden, uh, my M Super Aero for a while, you can just flip the pedals up and down with your feet. So as you can arrive coolly at the shops or wherever, or outside the pub, you pull up, you take one foot off as you're riding in, you flip the pedal up and you stand down. Not on this, <laughs> this is hard work. So you've got to actually um, force them up and down. Some of the wheels I know I've ridden as well, I've got like a magnetic clasp on there, so when they close or up and down, they're held in place. This is held purely by being tight and hard to move. Uh, so that can be a bit frustrating. The other frustrating thing is that on the, uh, the foot plates they've got these fantastic kind of sandpaper finish grips for your feet and they work really well. Once you're on here, you are solidly on here. That's great. Until you are forcing this down on and off, put it down. And every time you do that, push it down, it takes a layer of skin off your fingers. Minor, minor niggles because, I'll tell you now, pick your fault here because this is a beautiful wheel. Um, some of the other features I really like the lights on this. I have never ridden a wheel with as much power in the headlamps as this. This does light up where you're going. There's no doubt that you're coming. You will, you'll be seen from a distance, possibly from space. This is a bright light and it'll adjust uh, the light in which direction you're going. So if you're going forwards or backwards, this will become a red light at the front or a white, right, uh, white bright light at the front. Uh, the other great feature is the mud flap here. What a clever, simple design this is. I have ridden this out in the wet on my way to work and other wheels I've had, you'd have to take waterproofs and cover up completely. Uh, not with this, this catches everything. I get no splash marks up my back or on my trousers at all. Really good. Um, what else can I tell you? The, the tire on this, this is a big old wheel, 18 inch wheel and it is comfortable and easy to ride. It's not like the, uh, so some other wheels with the big fat tyres, um, the Z10 for example, this is very easy to manoeuvre around and this takes quite a good pounding. I don't do lots of jumps up and down logs and over boulders and things, um, but uh, I've been out riding around today uh, doing some practicing going up and down steps and stuff and this tyre is impressive, it takes everything you can throw at it. Uh, not tested it on the mud or anything yet, but maybe over the next 250 kilometres I'll get out and try a little bit of that. So, 
What more to tell you really, not an awful lot other than uh, this is a very impressive, a solidly built, well made wheel that takes a heck of a beating and still keeps on riding incredibly well in all conditions and I fully recommend it. There's 250 more kilometres to go with this uh, and as it's saving me time to and from work that gives me more time to ride for pleasure so I'll have plenty of time to get those miles in. So keep watching the Speedy Feet reviews. If you like what you see then click and subscribe and please share it with those that you know and love or those you want to impress and keep on riding and stay safe. Thank you very much. And if you like what you see, then click and subscribe. Mario, just rewind that, it'll make sense.